Well, shall we start, ma'am? Toby. A very good morning to one and all present. So welcome you to the last uh, day of the six days online FTTP on strength of materials. So we have the last uh, lecture session on the analysis of trusses. And today the session will be taken by uh, our HOD, Dr. R. Kumuda. So it's my great uh, pleasure to welcome, uh, to introduce her to you. Dr. R. Kumuda is presently professor and head, Department of Civil Engineering, Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering, Sri Paramadur. Her research area is geopolymer composites, fiber reinforced polymer composites, and sustainability in construction. Dr. R. Kumuda has published papers in 57 international or national journals, out of which 25 journal publications are Scopus indexed, with 345 citations and H index of 8 and 707 citations in Google Scholar and H index of 10. She has received funded projects from Department of Science and Technology, UGC and AICT, New Delhi. In total, she has fetched a grant of about rupees 40 lakhs from various funding agencies. In recognition of her outstanding research contributions, her biographical profile has been included in Marquis Who's Who in the World 2009. She is also the recipient of many prestigious awards like Shesta Akhtar Memorial National Award for Best Woman Engineering College Teacher for the year 2018 from ISTE, New Delhi, Professor K. Armugam National Award for Innovative Research in Engineering and Technology for the year 2014 from ISTE, State Award for Best Engineering College Teacher for the year 2016 from ISTE, Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry section, and Best Guide Award from Entrepreneurs Council of India in National Level Paper Presentation Contest. She has played the role of Scientific Committee Member, Keynote Speaker, and Session Chair in several international conferences held in Singapore, China, Dubai, and Czech Republic. She has also delivered many expert lectures uh, for many technical institutions in India. Uh, it's my privilege to welcome her for this lecture. Ma'am, you may please take over the session. Yes, ma'am. Thank ma you, Ruby. Is my voice audible? Okay. So thank you very much for uh, introducing me to the audience. So. As uh, Madam mentioned, today is the last uh, day of the program. So this is the uh, last session, technical session. So I'm going to deal with uh, the analysis of trusses uh, using a tension coefficient method. So I think in the yesterday session, afternoon session, uh, Dr. Vadivachali and Kaliviran has, uh, um, I think he explained you in detail about the analysis of trusses uh, using method of joints and uh, uh, method of uh, sections. I think he has also explained in depth about uh, uh, the types of trusses and also the types of uh, uh, indeterminacies and also how to find out the indeterminacies of a given truss, so etc. So I don't want to get into that uh, details again once again. So just I want to uh, confine myself to the topic uh, given to me that is the tension coefficient method. So the contents uh, of my presentation. So here I'm going to discuss about uh, the analysis of uh, plane trusses uh, using the method of tension coefficient and also I'm going to discuss about the analysis of space trusses using the method of tension coefficient and also I'm going to give you a small exercise at the end of the session so which uh, I think uh, you will be able to do it at the end of the session. So, so we are all faculty members I know you know something about the analysis of the trusses I think you know very well about the analysis of the trusses but anyway so i'll just uh, i'll just uh, try to refresh uh, so whatever things we have known already on this particular topic so you know very well the plane truss so it is the uh, two dimensional uh, truss system so where uh, the trusses are composed of uh, uh, simple triangles okay so uh, uh, in the trusses uh, so all the members are connected uh, or assumed to be connected by the uh, pins okay 
and uh, also we assume that uh, uh, the way, whatever the external loads are acting on the truss system they act only at the joints not it between the uh, joints so because of this only uh, the truss uh, system or the truss members will have only uh, either uh, uh, tensile forces or compressive forces so we don't have the uh, the bending moments in the truss system so this plane truss so it is uh, uh, the basic element of the plane truss uh, is three members okay so uh, you can see here uh, so it's a uh, simple triangle so where the three members are connected at joints and uh, so we can also add to this uh, uh, the base triangle we can add more members uh, in order to um, identify or locate a new joint and this process will be continued to form a complete truss system so the truss which is uh, constructed in this manner we call it as a uh, simple truss and uh, so we have the bars angle sections and tubular sections etc so these sections normally will be arranged in order to form a triangle and on also we construct the complete truss by repeating this and all the members will be connected at certain points which we call it as either nodes or joints so this is a plane truss uh, system and uh, coming to the uh, analysis of the plane truss system using the tension coefficient method so this is the method which is developed by professor uh, uh, rv southwell uh, in the year 1920 and he is a professor from university of oxford actually what he tried is uh, he tried to uh, establish some relationship between uh, the forces uh, in the truss members and the coordinates of the truss members so you can see here in this particular uh, and this particular method can be uh, used uh, uh, for both plane trusses as well as the space truss systems and particularly it is more convenient to go for uh, uh, this tension coefficient method for the space truss system so if you look at this particular uh, uh, diagram so you can see here so this uh, we have considered a, a single member of a truss and uh, this member ab and uh, these are the coordinates of the points of the joints so for point a or for joint a you have the coordinate x a and y a so since we here talk about the plane truss system so i am confining myself to the coordinates in terms of x and y and similarly for the point b so you have the two coordinates like uh, cartesian coordinates x b and y b and this angle of inclination of this member ab is nothing but alpha so this angle is the angle of inclination of this particular member with respect to the x axis now if this is going to be the case so what he did is uh, he, he established a relationship between the uh, the member force that is tab so tab is nothing but the tension in the uh, member ab so he has established a relationship between this tab and the coordinates x a y a as well as x b y b so uh, so we know very well so the this force is a uh, uh, the force acting in the member ab so we're going to assume it uh, as a tensile force and also we are going to assume the positive force and the tensile force is tab the length of the member is lab so we can calculate the length of the member uh, ab because we know the coordinates x a and y a and similarly x b and y b so we can easily find out the uh, length of the member also and here the two joints are assumed to be pin joints so a and b are uh, pin joints and uh, tab is the force in the member ab and lab is the length of the member ab now so what we are going to do here is so we are going to represent this tensile force tab along two components so as you know very well any inclined force can be resolved into two components one in the x direction another one in the y direction so we can also do this here so this tab can be resolved along x axis as well as tab can be resolved along y axis so when i try to uh, resolve this forces along x axis as well as along y axis so the x component of the force will be So this is the xy system so where you have uh, this tab so this is a and this is b so this angle of inclination of the member whatever it is it is alpha or theta whatever it is so i'm going to now resolve this force along the x direction so when you resolve it along the x direction so we get uh, tab cos alpha similarly when i try to resolve this force along the y direction so i am getting tab 
sin alpha. And now this is the coordinate x a and y a of the point a and similarly x b and y b of the point b. And we know that l a b is the length of the member a b. So you can calculate the length of the member a b also because we need uh, we know the coordinates. So you can simply apply the distance formula. So we'll get uh, So x b minus x a whole square plus y b minus whole square. Okay. So this t a b cos alpha again. So if I uh, get the cos alpha from this, so the cos alpha will be the adjacent side by hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is nothing but uh, you have uh, x b minus x a. So cos alpha is equal to divided by L A B. So you'll get T A B into X B minus X A divided by L A B. And similarly here, this can be written as T A B into and sine alpha is nothing but Y B minus Y A divided by L A B. So now we have resolved this tensile force T A B along uh, uh, the two perpendicular axis along X axis and the Y axis. So we get along the X axis the force is TAB into XP minus XA divided by LAB. Similarly, along the y-axis, it is nothing but TAB sine alpha, which is TAB into YB minus YA divided by LAB. Now, I'm going to convert this like this TAB divided by LAB. I'm going to replace this by small TAB. And similarly, I'm going to replace this by small TAB, which is nothing but the tension coefficient. So tension coefficient is nothing but the force in that particular member or the tension or pull in that particular member divided by the length of the member. So we're going to represent this as TAB, that is small TAB, it is nothing but the tension coefficient. So now, uh, so tension coefficient can be written as TAB divided by L. Now the unit for this tension coefficient is, you know, this is the ratio between the force to the length of the member. Therefore, it will be Newton per meter or kilonewton per meter, whatever the units given in the problem. So this is a small derivation. So uh, for uh, resolving the forces or for resolving the tensile force along the x-axis and the y-axis. So it's given here. So we get this relationship TAB cos alpha is equal to this and TAB sine alpha is equal to this. And this term, we call it as the tension coefficient. Okay. So now uh, you can see from this equation, the force in any member or in a truss member is related to the, co the coordinates of the particular member. So this is the relationship which is established by uh, Professor Southwell. And this equation has been used to solve the problems of the truss using tension coefficient method. See, for each and every member, you have to establish this relationship. And uh, suppose if you have more than... Uh, um, let, let us say, now we are talking about a single member, but in a truss system, so each joint will have uh, uh, more than two members or three members or whatever. So how many members based on the number of members meeting at the joint? So you have to find out this relationship for so that, that, that members and we have to establish the equation of equilibrium. And another point is that here in the tension coefficient method also, so we are going to apply the principle of uh, 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 equations of equilibrium and also we are going to apply the method of joints only so nothing uh, more than that but the one thing is that you have to establish this relationship between the uh, the force in the member and the coordinates of the particular member now coming to the space truss system see whatever concept or whatever uh, the principle we are using in tension coefficient method uh, uh, which is applicable to the plane truss it is applicable for the space stress also, okay? So in space stress, uh, so we form a three-dimensional system. And again, all the members are connected together uh, using pin joints. And here, uh, uh, the basic system for a three, uh, space stress is a tetrahedron, okay? So we have about six members and we have four joints. So six members and four joints, they form together to form a basic tetrahedron. So that is a simple uh, space stress system. So as you know very well, the truss system can be used in uh, bridge structures or it can be used in the uh, roof systems also. 
okay so the basic uh, uh, the structure or the basic simple system of a 3d uh, truss or a space truss is a tetrahedral and finally uh, we can add more members to form the uh, either uh, compound truss or complex truss so coming to the types of the space trusses so this is the simple system as i said so it is constructed from a basic tetrahedron and uh, it can be enlarged further by adding again more members like this okay so the figure here you can see the simple tetrahedron system and finally we are adding more members to form the uh, trusses like this and this is a compound space truss so here we are adding some two or more simple truss like this in order to form a uh, compound uh, uh, space truss and this is a complex space truss this doesn't fall under the category of either uh, simple truss or the compound truss and uh, while we talk about uh, uh, the stability or uh, uh, the equilibrium of the uh, space truss system so because it is in three dimensions so we have to consider the equation of equilibrium along the two uh, three mutually perpendicular axes therefore for each joint actually we have to consider the equations of equilibrium in three axes x y and z so uh, this is the equation we are going to make use of uh, while we um, deal with the equilibrium of the uh, joint in the case of three uh, three dimensional truss or the space truss that is summation fx equal to 0 summation fy equal to 0 and also summation fz is equal to 0 and also here when we talk about the truss so we have to uh, talk about the stability and also we have to talk about the uh, internal stability as well as the external stability of the truss because in truss normally we have two types of indeterminacies one is the internal indeterminacy another one is the external indeterminacy so no normally the external indeterminacy is provided by means of uh, 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 the uh, support reactions the support reactions offered and also the internal indeterminacy is uh, discussed based upon the number of members present in the truss so in the truss so we have two types of indeterminacies one is the internal another one is the external and external here we are going to uh, talk about the support reactions and we are going to talk about the indeterminacy based on the support reactions whereas in the case of internal indeterminacy we are going to um, uh, uh, talk about the number of members present in the truss and here uh, for a truss to be stable so it should be uh, the, the number of uh, external indeterminacy or uh, the number of reactions to be present in the truss should be six okay so uh, here r represents the number of support reactions provided so if it is r is less than six the truss is considered to be unstable and if r is greater than six it is considered to be externally indeterminate okay so here r refers to the number of support reactions number of unknown reactions or number of support reactions so r should be six actually in order to uh, uh, tell that the, the truss is stable if r is less than six definitely the truss is going to be unstable and if r is greater than six definitely we are going to call the truss as a externally indeterminate truss and uh, uh, so we we should have uh, the sufficient number of support reactions because the support reactions is going to help you or help the truss system to be in equilibrium whether it is force equilibrium or moment equilibrium whatever so the number of uh, support reactions should be sufficient in order to uh, keep the truss in uh, uh, in stable condition that is we are talking about the external stability and uh, again as i said for uh, internal indeterminacy actually we we are going to discuss the internal indeterminacy in terms of the number of members present in the truss so if uh, uh, here we are going to like uh, number of members is denoted as m and uh, j refers to the number of joints and r it is nothing but number of supports it's not number of support it's number of the support reactions and again we have some established relationships if m is 3j plus r we call it as stable and internally determinate and if m is less than 3j plus r it is unstable truss and if m is greater than 3j plus r we call it as internally indeterminate okay and uh, so the internal stability can be checked only by the inspection whereas the external uh, the stability can be checked uh, uh, by the number of reactions or number of unknown reactions we have or the support reactions we have whereas the internal stability can be checked only by the inspection process so internally so these are the conditions and externally these are the conditions so if for uh, internal stability if it is a determinate truss m plus r is equal to 3j for indeterminate truss m plus r greater than 3j and for unstable truss m plus r uh, less than 3j so when is the m is the number of members and r is the number of support reactions and 3 is the number of joints 
And similarly, uh, for external indeterminacy, so if the number of support reactions less than six, we call it as unstable truss. If R is equal to six, we call it as determinate uh, if the truss is stable. And the last one is if R is greater than six, we call it as indeterminate truss. And again, coming to the types of supports in the truss systems, so either we can have the short links like this, okay, which offers the reaction like this, or we can have roller support, or we can have the ball and socket support. So if you have the ball and socket support, so you have the three unknown reactions at the particular support. So these are the different types of supports systems available for the trusses. Now, just to have taken a few examples uh, to see whether the truss is determinate or not. So here, uh, so in this particular uh, truss system, so you, you have three members, you have the ball and socket joint. So if you have the ball and socket joint at each and every uh, joint, so you will have the three reactions, Fx, Fy, and Fz. So here you have the three ball and socket joints, therefore R is equal to nine. So you can see here R is equal to nine and you have three members, M is equal to three, and you have four joints, J is equal to four. Okay, so if you apply this condition, M plus R, M plus R is equal to 12, and three J again is 12, so here both are equal, that is M plus R is equal to 3J. So if M plus R is equal to 3J, we call this truss as a determinant truss. Okay. And coming to the second example again, so here, uh, here also this is a ball and socket arrangement. So you have about five supports. So you have uh, 15 unknown uh, the reactions or support reactions are there. And the number of members present in the system is 15. And joints, number of joints is 10. So when you apply this M plus R, we get 30 and 3J, we get 30. So both are equal. Therefore, we call this truss system as a determinate truss system. And similarly, we have the another example. So here, if you take uh, M is equal to 13 and number of joints 8, R is equal to 12. So here we get M plus R is equal to 25, whereas 3J is only 24. Okay, whereas the M plus R is greater than 3J, that is 24, 3J is only 24. Therefore, it is a indeterminate trust to the first degree. So the degree of indeterminacy is one for this case. Now, uh, when you want to design a trust system and we make some assumptions in the analysis stage itself. So in the analysis uh, part, we assume that all the members are joined together by the pinned connections by smooth pins. Uh, therefore, no friction and also it cannot resist any moment. So that is the first assumption we do in the uh, truss analysis. And also we assume that all the loads are applied at the joints, all the reaction forces or, or whatever the external forces or reaction forces. So whatever forces acting on the system, it is acting only at the joints, not in between the joints. So the, these are the two assumptions normally we make in the analysis part. And because of this, so each truss member will behave like an axial member only. So it will be subjected to either tension or it will be subjected to either uh, uh, or compression. Okay, so you have the either tensile force or the compressive force in the truss members. And coming to the uh, space stress again, while applying the tension coefficient method for the space stress. So again, since it is a three dimensional uh, member, so now I'm going to express the coordinates in terms of X, Y and Z. Okay, the same member, I'm considering a member of the truss in a 3D system. So AB is a member and TAB is the tension in the particular member. And I'm uh, uh, fixing the coordinates of point A and B. So XA, YA and ZA, similarly XB, YB and ZB. And again, the length of the member is going to be LAB. Okay, so the same way, so whatever we did for the two-dimensional truss system, we're going to do the same thing for the three-dimensional three truss system. So what we're going to do is we're going to resolve the forces that is, we are going to resolve the force TAB along x-axis, along y-axis, and along z-axis. So here, similar to that expression, what we uh, saw for the uh, plane truss system, so we are going to have another equation for this 3D uh, space truss also. So again, you have x, y, z, and z. So you have a member AB. So you have the tension in the member as TAB. So you have the coordinates xa, ya, and za. Similarly, you have xb, yb, and zb. Therefore, now I'm going to resolve it along x direction. Similarly, along y and along z. So if I resolve it along uh, x, okay. So tab cos alpha. So already we got this relationship tab into 
x b minus x a divided by l. So which is nothing but uh, t a b that is small t a b into x b minus x a. Okay. So similarly, I can resolve it along y. So when I resolve it along y, so I'll be getting t a b into y b minus y a. And similarly, when I resolve the x component, I'll be getting t a b into z b minus z a. Okay, so where this small t a b is nothing but the tension coefficient, which is nothing but the force per unit length of the member. So whatever we have done for the train truss system, so similarly we can do it for the uh, space truss also. There is not much difference in that. So again, we are going to. So if you have several members meeting at a particular joint, so you have to write these equations for all the members, and you have to apply the equations of equilibrium. So as I said, for uh, 3D systems or space truss system. So you have three equations, summation fx0, summation fy0, and summation fz is equal to 0. Okay, so this is the concept. So suppose, uh, and in addition to that, uh, actually we are talking about only the force in the member, TAB. In addition to that, in the truss system, you have some external forces also. Okay, so whatever the external forces acting at the joints, you have to consider that also while writing the equation of equilibrium. Okay, so suppose... If at the joint A, you have uh, some external forces acting in the X direction, for example, XA. Okay, similarly, you have some external force YA, which is acting in the Y direction. Similarly, if you have some external force EZA, which is acting in the Z direction, you have to consider that external force also while writing the equation of equilibrium. Therefore, you can get, you will get three equations like this. Okay, TAB into XB minus XA. So here we have considered uh, uh, members A, B, A, C, and A, C, A, Q. Because at joint A, you will have more members, right? You will not have only single member. Suppose if you have three members meeting at a particular joint, for example, A, B, A, C, and A, Q. So for all these three members, you have to establish this equation. You have to write this equation and you have to sum it up, okay? That is for uh, all the X direction forces, you have to sum it up. This X A is nothing but the external force which is acting in the X direction. Similarly for Y direction, similarly for Z direction. So this equation is nothing but summation fx equal to 0 and this is nothing but summation fy equal to 0 and this is summation fz is equal to 0. And uh, so once you get, uh, uh, once you write these equations, you can solve it for the unknowns. That is, you can solve for the tension coefficients TAB, TAC and TAQ. After getting the tension coefficients, you can easily find out the tension in that particular member by multiplying by the length of the member. Okay. So, uh, so here in tension coefficient method also, so we are going to apply the equations of equilibrium that is summation fx0, summation fy0, and summation fz0. And also we are going to apply method of joints only. Okay, so both these uh, things will be used in the tension coefficient method. And also while analyzing the truss using tension coefficient method, so you have to uh, go joint by joint and you have to, in the case of plane truss problem, you have to identify a joint where you have the maximum of Two unknowns. Similarly, in the case of space stress, so you have to identify a joint where you have the maximum of three unknowns. Okay, so this is applicable to the method of joints also, right? So similar way in the tension coefficient method also, we are going to identify the joint uh, based on the number of unknowns in a particular joint. So after formulating the equations, we have to solve the equations and we have to get the tension coefficients and uh, for getting the final force in the member, you have to multiply the tension coefficient with the corresponding length because we know that tension coefficient is equal to t by l i'm sorry t is equal to t by l okay therefore in order to uh, it's right t is equal to t by l therefore in order to get the final force you have to multiply the tension coefficient by the length of the member so from these three equations you will be getting small t after getting the small t you multiply by the length of the corresponding member to find the force in that particular member Okay, so this is the principle, overall principle of the tension coefficient method. So you have any doubts on, on this? Up to this, you have any doubts? No, ma'am. Yes. So now just uh, I have summarized here the procedure for the tension coefficient method. So the first and foremost thing, what you have to do is for a given thrust, so you have to, or you have to uh, list out the coordinates of each and every joint of the thrust. Because mostly the students will, uh, like, uh, they will do mistakes in this part, particular part, especially, especially in 3D trust. 
so they'll have some difficulty in um, locating or uh, the fixing the coordinates of the uh, joints in a given truss system so that has to be done very clearly after understanding uh, because uh, they may uh, feel difficult to uh, fix the coordinates of given truss system okay so the first thing is so we have to fix the coordinates of each and every joint of the truss and for the analysis purpose we are going to assume that all the forces are positive or all the members carry the tensile forces that therefore we have to mark the forces away from the joint okay that is the second thing and as i said for the plane truss you have to identify a joint where you have the maximum of uh, two unknown forces in the case of space truss you have to identify a joint where you have the maximum of three unknown uh, forces and after identifying the joint again you have to resolve it okay resolve the forces in the x direction and y direction and uh, before that suppose if you have supports in the system for cantilever truss there won't be an issue but if you have other simply supported truss or something like that you have to find out the support reactions also okay so whatever loads for whatever loads given on the truss you have to find out the support reactions and that support reactions are also to be considered while drawing the free body diagram of a particular joint okay so when you take a joint separately we are drawing the free body diagram right so the free body diagram is nothing but we are isolating the joint and we are marking on the joint whatever the forces acting on the joint okay that is called as free body diagram so first you have to fix the coordinates of the joints and we are going to assume that all the forces are positive or all the member forces are tensile in nature and we are going to identify the joint and before identifying the joint you have to get the support reactions okay if there are supports in the truss you have to get the support reactions for the given loads because the, those support reactions are also to be considered while considering the equilibrium of the joint okay then you identify the joint you apply the equations of equilibrium at that particular joint after writing the equations of equilibrium you try to solve that equations in order to get the tension coefficients at that particular joint so this process has to be repeated okay so once if a joint is over then you have to proceed to the next joint okay and till you get the member forces of all the um, uh, forces of all the members so you have to it's not step five you have to repeat the previous step okay select the next joint with only two unknown members forces and apply the equations of equilibrium and obtain the tension coefficient and finally after getting the tension coefficients you can make use of this equation to get the final forces in the members okay so this is the summary of the procedure using tension coefficient method now with this background okay let us try to uh, solve this problem so i've just taken only limited problems so one for uh, uh, a plane truss that is one a cantilever truss i have taken and the second problem which i have taken is a simply supported truss again a plane truss and the third problem which i have taken for the analysis is a space truss okay so here in the problem one actually uh, it shows a uh, barren type uh, cantilever truss with the imposed loads as shown in the figure and we have to get the forces in all the members using the method of tension coefficients so here actually we have to fix the coordinates so the coordinates are also are given in the second diagram you can see here okay so this is the cantilever truss so this is the support of the truss and here you can see the external loads which are given 3 kN and 3 kN and here at point E and D you have 2 kN each and the angle of inclination is also given and the coordinates also I have given because here they have taken D that is origin this point 0 comma 0 and this distance is 8 this is 8 comma 0 and this is again 8 so 16 comma 0 and the height is actually 6.93 and uh, the distance is 4 again from this point it is 4 and again from this point it is uh, 12 and again from this point is 16 so these are the coordinates of the truss system okay now this is a cantilever truss so no need to get the support reactions and all so in order to proceed with this problem which joint we can take first if you want to analyze this truss problem using method of tension coefficient So you have to identify a joint where you have the maximum of two unknowns, right? Yes, dear participants, can you please respond? From which joint we have to proceed first? Laser connection, sir. Pardon? 
joint d am i not audible sir am i not audible yeah, joint d madam joint d why sir why joint because, d because uh, two members are connecting so we have to identify easily yes yes so in joint d we have only two members whereas if you take the joint c how many members are connected cb you have ce you have cd okay similarly if you take the joint e you have so many members like ef eb ec and ed similarly at joint b you have so many members so you have to start from the joint d where you have only two members so the first thing what we have to do is you have to isolate this joint d and you have to mark on the joint d what are the forces acting on the system right so what are the forces at joint d what are the forces at the joint d so you have dc and the tension yeah you have the tension let me draw the diagram here itself okay so this is the joint d what are the external forces acting at the joint d c and e what are the external forces acting at the joint d one is for c and another one is for e no i'm asking uh, i'm asking about the external force what are the forces acting uh, at the point kilonewton. yeah you have a 2 kN force which is acting like this and apart from this you have the two members like this so what is this member force td e or fde whatever okay and this is tdc or fdc okay and what is this angle what is this angle given degree yeah 60 degree okay so you can resolve it right so you can apply your equation summation fx equal to 0 and summation fy equal to 0 so when you resolve this okay now you have to write again that equation whatever equation we have so what is the equation as per the tension coefficient method what is the equation we have so we have tdc and tde right you have tdc and tde so what is the equation as per the tension coefficient method so what is the relationship between the force and the coordinates can anyone tell me so tde into So what is the equation we have seen? What is the equation we have seen? Can I move back? Yes. So this is the equation, right? Suppose if you have three members, A, B, A, C, and A, Q. So this is the equation we have, right? T A B into X B minus X A plus T A C into X C minus X A plus T A Q into X Q minus X A. Okay. Now can you please tell me? So what is the equation we are going to have again when you apply summation f x equal to zero? Is this equation right? So you have two members d c and d e. So I am going to write summation f x equal to zero or summation h is equal to zero, whatever. So t d c into x c minus x d plus t d e into you have x e minus x d. Whether you have any forces in the x direction, any other forces in the x direction? No, ma'am. No. Okay. Therefore, simply it is equal to zero. Okay. So this is your first equation. And here in this equation, you have to substitute the coordinates. Okay. The coordinates of uh, that is x coordinate of point C and x coordinate of point D. Similarly, x coordinate of point D e and x coordinate of the point D. What is the x coordinate of the point C? What is the x coordinate of the point C? Four. Four. Okay. What is the x coordinate of the point D? Zero. Right? Is it clear? Clear, ma'am. And similarly, what is the x coordinate of the point E? It is eight. Okay. So you have to substitute the coordinates of each and every point here. Okay. So when you simplify this, you are getting the final equation like this. That is four T D C plus eight T D E is equal to zero. 
And the next thing is you have to apply summation f y equal to zero or summation v equal to zero. Okay. So here also the same thing, the same equations will come. That is T D C into here it is Y C minus Y D plus T D E into Y E minus Y D. In addition to that, don't forget the external force which is given. So what is the external force which is acting here at the point D in the Y direction? Two kilonewton, right? At the point D. Yes. yes. So it is acting in the downward direction. So I have to put minus two is equal to zero. Right. So this is the second equation. When you simplify this, you are getting like this. Okay. Then you have to solve these two equations and you have to solve. So from this equation, you can easily get TDC. And after getting TDC, you can substitute back here and get the value of TDE. Okay, so now you got the tension coefficients. So these are nothing but tension coefficients. So tension coefficients for the member DC as well as for member DE. Okay, now once you get the tension coefficients, you can easily calculate the member force, right? So member force is TDC, capital TDC and capital TDE. What you have to do? What you have to do after getting the tension coefficients? You can easily get the force in the member DC and DE, right? So how to get that? Once you know the value of the tension coefficients, you have to multiply by you have to multiply by participants. Are you here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So in order to get the final forces, what you have to do once you get the tension coefficients value? You have to multiply by what? Yeah, you have to multiply by the length of the member. Yeah, very good. Very good. You have to multiply by the length of the member. Therefore, TDC into length of the member DC. And similarly, TDE is equal to TDE, the tension coefficient, multiplied by the length of the member DE. So is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so we have taken the equilibrium at the joint D first of all, and we have found out the member forces TDE and TDC. Now, what is the next joint we can take? So now these uh, two member forces are known to us, right? So what is the next joint we can take? C. Yeah, joint C. Okay. Joint C, how many members are three there members. totally? Is it three? Three members. Or four? Yes. Three members. So what are the members? You have CB, CE and CD. Okay. Out of which the member for CD is already known. Okay. So next we're going to move to the joint C. Okay. So what is the free body diagram of the joint C? What is the free body diagram of the uh, joint C? So let me draw the free body diagram of the joint C. Joint C. So you have this one. Then you have uh, CE. So this is CB. This is CE. And you have uh, CD also. So here also I'm going to mark all the forces away from the joint. That is, I'm assume the, assuming that all the forces are positive. All are, all are tensile forces. Okay. So again, what is the equation? Is there any external force acting at this particular joint? It's three kilonewtons downwards. Yeah, you have a three kilonewton force which is in the downward direction. Okay. Now, what is the equation? Summation f x equal to zero. Can anyone tell me? So here we have taken joint C, right? Joint C. Yes. What is joint C? You have PCD, PCE, PCB. Okay. PCD, PCE, and PCB. So PCB, let me start from TCB into what is that? X, B minus Let's see. XC plus you have P, mm, CE into 
x e minus x c plus you have t c d into x t minus x c. Whether you have any forces no, in the x direction? No. External force? No. So simply you have zero. Right? So this is the equation. Okay. Now coming to y. Okay. So what is the y equation again? I mentioned f y equal to zero. If I apply, so you have T C B into Y B minus Y C plus T C E into Y E minus Y C plus T C D into Y D minus Y C. Again, you have one external force, right, in the y direction. So you have to put minus. 3 is equal to 0. Okay. So this is the, again, the first equation and this is the second equation. So again, what you have to do, you have to substitute all the coordinates. Okay. The coordinates of the point B, C and E. Similarly, D. Okay. So all the coordinates you have to substitute and you have to get the, already we know the value of uh, uh, TDC, right? TDC we know that is 0.2886. We already got from the joint D. So that you have to substitute. Right. So here you can see TCD value is already known. So we have substituted that also. And we have substituted all the coordinates. X coordinates here. Similarly, all the Y coordinates here. Okay. So here after solving these two equations, we'll be able to get the tension coefficients again. TCE and TCB. Is it right? Shall we proceed further? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now we have completed joint B as well as joint C, right? So these two joints are over. So what is the next joint? We can take it up, right? We have B, we have E. And we have F. So what we can do? Joint C is over. So we can proceed with joint E, right? So joint E in joint E, what are the member forces already known? And how many members are there, first of all? E carrying four members. We have four members. That is EF is there, EB is the there, BR. EC is there, and ED is there. Out of which? The member forces are known, Ilya. Few member forces are known. What are the member forces we know? We know EC as well as you know. Yes. C. EC and ED is known. Okay. Therefore, the remaining two member forces we have to get. That is, you have to get EB and EF. Okay. So, this is the joint E. So, again, they have applied the uh, equilibrium equation. Okay. So here, since we have four members, so we are getting four terms like this. TEC, TEB, TEF, and TED. And again, we are substituting the coordinates, X coordinates, and we are getting this equation. Okay. Whereas coming to the Y direction, so here you, you have to note that you have a external force of 2 kilonewton. Yes, Arun Kumar, sir. 2 kilonewton at the joint E. Okay, so that you have to consider. Okay, other than that, it's very simple. So again, after solving that, you'll be getting the tension coefficients TEB and TEF. Okay, so similarly, we have to proceed with the next joint also. So the next joint, what we can consider is so first we have taken joint B, then we have moved to joint C, then we have moved to joint E, then we can take joint B. Okay. So joint B. Again, joint B, how many members are there? You have? How many members are there in joint B? Same four members. Four members. Again, BA, you have BC, and you have BF, you have BE. So some member forces are already known in this also. So you can uh, consider the remaining things and you can apply the equations of equilibrium and you can get it. 
okay and again you have to be very careful here so at this point you have a downward force of 3 kilo newton therefore you have to consider that while you resolve the forces in the y direction is it clear that clear ma'am yes so this is about the uh, cantilever truss it's a very simple thing so no need to get the reactions so we have to take joint by joint and initially so we have to consider the joint where you have the maximum of three unknowns and while considering the equation of equilibrium or while writing the equation of equilibrium you have to be very careful suppose if there are any external forces which are given at the joints you have to consider that external forces also while writing the equations of equilibrium right clear for you any doubts in this clear to all okay thank you so this is the problem one okay now let us move on to the next problem uh, so the here you can see a simply supported kind of truss so you have to solve it again by the method of tension coefficients and the external force which is gives so left side support it is a hinged support and the right side support you have a roller support and you have a external force of 5 kilo newton which is given here okay and the coordinates are also given so the point a is the origin 0 comma 0 1.5 comma 0 3 comma 0 so really 3 comma 1.5 1.5 comma 1.5 and 0 comma 1.5 okay now for this type of truss problem you have to uh, find out the support reactions right because you have the supports left support is hinged support and right support is a roller support and at support a how many reactions will be there how many unknowns will be there how many support reactions will be there at support A? Two. Yeah, two will be there because it's a hinged support. So you have one horizontal reaction and one vertical reaction. Okay, it is represented as RAV and RAH. So you have to get the support reactions first of all. And similarly at the point E, it is a roller support. So you'll be having one vertical reaction like this. Okay. So now you have to apply again equations of equilibrium summation. H is equal to zero and summation V equal to zero to get the support reactions. Okay. I think you know how to get the support reactions, right? So when you apply summation H is equal to zero, what you'll be getting? So here they have assumed a direction like this. Okay. And here you have external force. Right? So what is RAH value? Automatically, you have external force of 3 kN, right? Acting towards right. Therefore, at A, your reaction will be towards left and the value will be 3 kN. Is that okay? Yes. And coming to the vertical loads, you have a total vertical load of the system to 5 kN. Okay? And you have to find the support reactions RAV as well as RE by applying summation v equal to 0 and also what is summation v equal to 0? RAV. What is summation v equal to 0? RAV plus RE minus 5 is equal to 0, right? So you have RAV plus RE is equal to 5. Any other vertical loads are there? No, ma'am. No. And in order to get the support reaction, you can get, you can uh, write the moment equation about any one support. Okay. So if I take moment about E, if I take moment about E, so what you'll be getting? RAV into? Sorry, the pen is not writing. So RAV into? Pen is not writing. Minus 5 into 1.5. Yes, okay. Okay, you know how to get the moment, right? About any one support. Yeah, RAV into 3. Okay, minus 5 into 1.5 is equal to 0. So you'll be getting 3 RAV is equal to 7.5, right? Is it right? No, no, you have to consider the 3 kilonewton also, right? So the 3 kilonewton also will produce some moment, yeah about the point E. 
So R A V into three, then minus five into one point five. Then you have another three kilonewton force, right? That will also create moment about the point E. So three into one point five. Is it right? So, how much is it? Minus seven point five plus four point five. Three, yeah. One more, ma. Correct, ah? Is it right? So, I am taking moment about the point E. So, R A V into three. Is it right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, minus five into one point five. Then this three kilonewton also will produce moment about the point E, which is nothing but three into one point five, which is four point five. So, this is four point five, and this is minus seven point five. So, you will get uh, minus three. So on the on the side pointing, and now R A V is equal to plus one and zero. Is it correct? So already we know R A V plus R E is equal to five. Therefore, R E will be equal to four kilonewton. So first you have to get the support reactions for this truss because when while we apply the tension coefficient method, while we consider the equilibrium of the joint, so you have to consider the support reactions and also you have to consider the external force acting on the system. Okay, so that you have to be very clear. Then in this problem, which joint we can start first? We can start with A or uh, E. 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 Yeah, we can start with A or E because at A you have two unknowns. Let us A C is there and uh, you have A B. Two members are there. A C and A B are there. So we can start with joint A. Okay. So I'm not going to explain this in detail because we have uh, solved the first problem in detail. So first we have to consider the joint A. So at joint A you have two members, A B and A C. In addition to that, in addition to that, okay. So you have to consider the support reactions also. So at point A especially, so you have two support reactions, R A H as well as R A B. Okay. Therefore, while applying summation F X equal to zero, you have to consider this R A H. Okay. Whereas if you apply uh, summation F Y equal to zero, you have to consider the support reaction one kilonewton. That you should not forget. So this is the equation. This is the equation along X direction. This is the equation along Y direction. Okay. So after writing this equation, again you have to substitute the coordinates X B, X A, X C, etc. And you have to substitute the reactions also, and you have to get the equations. After getting the equations, you have to solve it. And you have to get the tension coefficients T A C and T A B. Okay. Hope you are very clear on this. Then what is the next joint we can consider after taking the joint A? We can move to the joint B. Okay. We can move to the joint B because at joint B we have only three members, out of which the force in the member A B is known already, right? Therefore, you can move to the joint B and you can apply again the equations. Okay. And what is the next joint we can take? Joint B. Okay. So after completing the joint B, okay. So which joint shall we, uh, shall we uh, move? Okay. So first joint A, the second joint is B, the third joint is D. We have considered. Okay. So now after that completing the joint D, which joint will be convenient for us, whether C or F? C. Why C? Why not F? Arun Kumar sir. What is the advantage of taking the joint C, or any disadvantage you have while considering the joint C? When you consider the joint C, yeah, that is known. C A and C B or whatever. Okay, so you can take the joint C also because. Uh, Your this force will be known, and this force will be known. This force will be known. But which one is like complicated? Little bit complicated. See, you start with A, then you move to B, then you move to D. Okay. Then after D, you can take a, take either joint F or you can take either joint C also. But which one is comfortable for us? F only, ma'am. F only because at joint C you have so many members, right? So you have to consider all the members. You have to consider C A, C B, and C D, C F, and C E also. So you have five members. Whereas if you take the joint F, you have only three members: F D, F C, and F E. Therefore, you can consider the joint F better. Okay. So we can proceed to joint F. 
to find the TFC and TFE. Okay, and finally we can go again back to the joint E, this one. Okay, where you have only two members again, where FE is already known. So the only unknown is EC here. So we can easily find out. Is it clear? Any doubts? Yes. So joint by joint, we have considered the equilibrium. And for each and every joint, so we have estimated for all the members, for each and every joint, we have estimated the tension coefficients. So once the tension coefficient values are known, so we can multiply by the length of the corresponding members to get the final forces in the members. Okay, so it's very simple. The only thing is that, the students have to identify. So this is a two-dimensional problem. So there won't be much issues. They will identify or they will locate the coordinates very easily if it is a two-dimensional truss. Whereas coming to the three-dimensional truss, students will find difficulty in locating the XY coordinates of a particular joint. Okay, that has to be done correctly because all the equations are dependent upon your X and Y coordinates, right? X, B, X, A, Y, B, Y, A, Y, C, Y, A, etc. Okay, so therefore if the X and Y coordinates are identified wrongly the entire problem will go wrong therefore we have to teach them so how to fix the coordinates of the three-dimensional truss joints very clearly if once if they are clear on that the all other procedures are very simple and they will easily do it okay so the first and foremost thing especially in the three-dimensional truss problem or the space truss problem is they have to fix the coordinates of each and every joint very correctly okay now we'll move on to the uh, the next problem, problem three, which is a, a simple space truss, three-dimensional truss. Okay, so we are going to solve it again by the method of tension coefficients. Okay, so now here the origin, this is the X system given, this is the X coordinate system, this is the Y axis and this is the Z axis. Okay, so this is the point A, which is the origin, which is given here. And you have to fix the coordinates. And as far as the external loads are concerned, at the point C, you have a downward load of 200 kilonewton. At point C, you have a horizontal load of 50 kilonewton. Other than, that, other than that, there are no external loads. Okay. Now let us try to fix the coordinates. At point A, we are going to consider this as an origin. So 0, 0, 0. Whereas coming to the point B, point B is in which axis actually? This point. So you have four points here or four joints here, A, B, then you have C, then you have D. Point A is the origin, so we don't have any problem on that, 0, 0, 0. Now coming to the point B, right, this point B lies in which axis? Any answer? X-axis, good. So this point B is an X-axis, therefore if, a point, if any point lies in the X-axis, the other two coordinates will be zero. Okay, therefore Y and Z will be zero. So for point B, X is, in X it has moved by 8.3 meters, whereas in Y and Z it is zero. Okay, now coming to the point C. Okay, what is the coordinate of the point C? What is the coordinate of the point C? So you can see here point C. What is the X coordinate of the point C? See, in the, uh, uh, you can see here, this is projected here, and this is the point, right? This is the point. Up X level of move, actually. It has moved by? Level of move, point C. Yeah, 3 meters. That's right. So, X, it has moved by 3 meters. And what about Y? Again, 7 meters. And what about Z? So, if you project this in Z direction, it is moved by 1 meter. Therefore, it is 3, 7, and 1. Okay. And coming to the point D. Again, point D, it is lying on a plane. So, it is lying on which plane? Which plane it is lying? It is on the X, X is Z in. plane. X is Z plane. Therefore, Y will be 0. So, if any point is lying on your plane, for example, if it is lying on XY plane, Z will be 0. If it is lying on YZ plane, X will be 0. Similarly, if it is on XZ plane, Y will be 0. So here, since this point is lying on XZ plane, your Y will be 0. Therefore, 
and again x in the point c and d ore edla da irukku actually so x is 3 meters y is 0 and z is this 4.5 meters okay so we have fixed the coordinates now your x a x b x c x d similarly y a y b y c y d z a z b z c and z d are known okay so once it is known so simply we have to apply the equations of equilibrium and again i am repeating the external as far as the external forces are considered so here at the joint c you have the external force of 200 kN and 50 kN so other than that there are no external forces okay so again uh, so we can consider joint by joint okay so here joint c okay joint c again in x direction y direction as well as in z direction okay so if you take the joint c you can easily solve the problem so joint c how many members are there you have ca cd and cb you have three members so you can directly apply the equations of equilibrium at joint c so at joint c you have ca cd and cb and you have to consider the external forces also so this 50 kN which is acting in which direction x and 200 kN is acting in y direction so x direction la podrappo and 50 kN eludano and y direction you have to consider this minus 200 N whereas in z direction you don't have the external force okay so you will get three equations so while resolving in x direction you will get one equation similarly while you resolve it in y direction you will get another equation and similarly you will resolve it in z direction you'll get one more equation so you'll get three equations and you have three unknowns tca tcb and tcd so you can solve it easily okay so after getting the tension coefficients again you can find the length of the member so since this is a space stress so what is the equation you'll use to get the length of the member so if you know the coordinates you can calculate the length easily right so how to calculate the length of the member ca for example what is the length of member ca What is the length of member CA? Root of. What is the formula to calculate the length of the member? If you know the x coordinates, so you have x A, y A, z A, right? And similarly, you have uh, x C, y C, and z C. So, how to calculate the length if you know the coordinates? root of okay that's right the root of what is the formula in terms of xc xa what is the formula how to calculate the length xc b square plus one square yes plus yc minus oa the whole square plus zc minus z a the whole square so similarly for all other members also you can get the length of the members okay is this clear sure. yes now i'll just give you one simple problem right uh for so just uh, can you please think about this identify the members of the space stress that has zero force so you have some theorems or thumb rules for this right now without solving this problem right without solving this problem can you identify the members of the space stress that has the zero force and you have to tell me that logic also the theorem also so please go through it please go through the diagram of the given truss and you please identify the members that has the zero force whether uh, in the yesterday session this is covered the theorems for identifying the zero force members is this covered in the yesterday's lecture can i get some answer for this Is this covered? 
Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, yeah, this covered, right? This is covered. Now tell me. So in this particular truss, so what are the members which carry zero forces? And you tell me why? Okay, now let me uh, just uh, explain this rule also. This is just for your understanding. So how to identify the zero force members in a truss system? Okay, so the first case. Okay, so when two of the three members meeting at a joint or collinear. So here, uh, uh, which are collinear uh, members? So here, this is the joint A. We have three members, right? So this one is the member. This is another member. This is another member. Okay. So J, K. Okay, answer in the word. Okay. But anyway, let me explain this. So you have three members here. So two members are collinear. Okay. And there is no load which is acting at the joint. In that case, the force in the third member will be zero. So this member force will be zero. So that is one of the rule. And similarly here also. So you have three members meeting at this joint. Okay. So these two members are collinear members. And there is no load accept, uh, acting at the joint. And here third member force will be zero. So this is one of the thing. And the next thing is uh, two members meeting at a joint. Okay. And there is no load which is acting at the joint. In that case also, the members forces will be zero. Is it clear? Is it clear? These two cases? Yes. So the first case is you have three members meeting at a joint out of which two members are collinear and there is no load acting at the joint. So the force in the third member will be zero. And the second one is you have two members meeting at a joint. There is no load acting at the joint. And here also the forces in the members will be zero. And this is the next one. Okay. So we have two members meeting at a joint and there is a support here. Okay. Which offers the support reaction VA and this VA and this one member, it's collinear. Therefore, the force in the other member will be zero. Is this clear? So you have two members. In fact, this one and this one. So you have two members, this one and this one. Okay. And you have a support which offers the reaction VA. And this support reaction VA is collinear with this particular member. Okay. Because the line of action of VA is in line with uh, this member, therefore, the force in the other member will be zero. Okay, this is one of the thing. And the next thing, okay, so what is the next thing? So, here you can see this particular joint, you have so many members this one, member A, member B, and in, in, apart from this, you have three more members. Okay, and if you uh, take this, okay, and uh, you, you please like, suppose if these three members have the zero forces. Okay. And these two members. Suppose if you get the member forces is zero for these three members. And you assume that all these members meet at the joint. This particular joint. Okay. And if these two members, they do not lie in the straight line. Then the force in member A and B will be zero. Okay. So suppose in case. If you have five members and if already if we know that the forces in three members are zero and if the remaining two members they do not lie in the same straight line then the force in the other two members will also be zero so that is the next condition and what is this one again five members out of which three member forces are zeros but the remaining two members they are lying in the same straight line in the previous case they are not lying in the same straight line. So the other two member forces are also zeros. But here it might not be zero. Okay. So that is another thing. And the next condition is that three members again meeting at a particular joint. Member A, member B and member C. Okay. They do not lie in the same plane. Okay. So you have to understand this. These three members do not lie in the same plane. And also there is no external force in this particular joint. In that case, all the three forces 
will be zero. It is force in member A, force in member B, force in member C will be zero. Okay, so that is another thing. And here one more condition is there. Okay. That is, uh, you have uh, at point joint B, you have three members. One member, another member, and another member. And these two members are lying in the same plane, whereas this member is not lying in that same plane. Okay. So if all the members and external force except one member at a joint, say joint B, lie in the same plane, then the force in member A will be zero. Okay. So this is another condition. So you can apply any of the things in order to identify the members those who have zero forces. So this is the first one, where three members meet at a joint, where two members are collinear, the force in the third member will be zero. And also there is there should not be any load acting at the joint. That is also a condition. And here also when two members meet at a joint, there should not be load acting at the joint. The member forces are zeros. And suppose if you have two members meeting at the joint and you have a support reaction, which is in collinear with the other member, in that case, the force in the other member will be zero. And here you have uh, five members, out of which three members have zero forces. The other two members are not uh, collinear. They are not in a straight line. In that case, force in member A and member B will be zero. And this is another condition. Again, if they are in the same straight line, the forces might not be zero. And again, if three members act on the different planes, and also there is no external force at the joint, all the member forces will be zero. Right? And this is another condition. Now, can you identify for the given press? Member forces are zero or could identify JK Abdin force could recur, Mr. Karthigayan is a zero force member. Now, can you explain what is the reason for that, Mr. Karthigayan, sir? I'll just give you the answer also. Okay. So JK, JK. Also, Sirka, actually, F5, F5, F5 is zero. That's right. Okay. So this is the answer for this problem. So we can just, I'll share the PPT also. You can just think about it at your free time or leisure time. You can just go through this problem and can try to identify. So for all the, uh, for which four members, your forces are zero. Okay. So any doubts you have in the tension coefficient method? It's a clear. Yes. So any doubts you have? If there are no doubts, we can just close the session. Any doubts or clarification? Yes. Over to Ruby, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it was a very good presentation and uh, the session was uh, interactive. So thank you, participants, also. So we'll uh, meet for the tutorial session in another 15 minutes. We'll close the session. Uh, please join the tutorial uh, session in 15 minutes. And Ruby, madam, whether the materials are shared with the participants, whatever like we have collected so far from the speakers, whether it has been shared because you shared with me yesterday. Uh, yes, sir. The, material, uh, yeah, the materials are shared, ma'am. Okay, okay. So we'll meet again at 10.50, yes, right? Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Thank you.